Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. One of the central overarching themes in Franz Kafka's story, The Metamorphosis, that many people have pointed out to be such, is something that can be called alienation. And this is a philosophical term that pervades not just philosophy, but literature, sociology, all sorts of things. And it's got a broad extent. And, you know, you could think of it in terms of becoming other to yourself or to, to other people, you know, no longer fitting into your spot, becoming different. Estrangement is another way of rendering it. And estrangement is kind of nice in English because it not only has to do with the breakdown or straining of a relationship, but with becoming strange, becoming odd, becoming something foreign, right? So is this going on in the novel? Yes, definitely. So, you know, what are aspects of this more generally before we jump in? So, you know, it could be that things or people become isolated from each other, become even antagonistic to each other, as we're going to see, you know, the economic relations are in some respects. It could be that their roles and their relationships change or even go away. It could be impossible to continue a relationship given this alienation. You can also become other to yourself. You can no longer recognize who or what you are. And this is a you know, very profound sense of alienation that troubles many people, which we can see happening in this novel. We can talk about being cut off from things that previously were a central part of your existence. For example, activities or, you know, in economic terms, the products that you make or even the projects that you are engaged in, that you find meaning in. Uh, it could also be an alienation from your own lived body or voice or face, as we're going to see happening with Gregor in this story. So we can start by thinking in economic or social terms. At the very beginning of the novel, we, or short story, we find that uh, Gregor is waking up and he's missed his alarm. And why is this a big problem? Because he needs to go to work. He needs to catch the train. As a matter of fact, he's already late. And we're going to see the chief clerk from the office is going to come and check up on him. Gregor is a traveling salesperson. He's deliberately chosen this so he can make more money. So he can... Uh, better his position and that of his family, and also deal with something that has been lingering. His father's business failed and that left the family in debt. And Gregor is working off the debt by the job that he has undertaken. And it's not a job that he particularly enjoys or likes. There's a lot of hardships and things that, you know, he doesn't really care for. We see an interesting dialogue 
where Gregor says, um, you know, I'm not obstinate. I'm willing to work. Traveling is a hard life, but I couldn't live without it. Where are you going, sir? He's talking to the chief clerk. To the office? Will you give a true account of all this? One can be temporarily incapacitated, but that's just the moment for remembering former services and bearing in mind that later on when the incapacity has been got over, one will certainly work with all the more industry and concentration. I'm loyally bound to serve the chief. Besides, I have to provide for my parents and my sister. Don't make things any worse for me than they are. Stand up for me in the firm. Travelers are not popular there. People think they earn sacks of money and just have a good time. But you, sir, have a more comprehensive view than the chief himself, who being the owner lets his judgment easily be swayed. So he's trying to engage in some persuasion with the chief clerk, but the chief clerk cannot understand what he's saying. And when Gregor is going to come out, the chief clerk is going to run away in horror of him. And this is a catastrophe. This is... Uh, you know, a loss of employment, a loss of connection, uh, worries about how this debt is going to be paid, how his family is going to be provided for. And we find that Gregor, initially his family was, was quite happy to have him uh, taking on all of these, these uh, obligations, but later they come to just accept it as the new status quo. So uh, we read that there had been fine times and they never recurred, at least not with the same sense of glory. Although later on, Gregor had earned so much money, he was able to meet the expenses of the whole household and did so. They'd simply got used to it, both the family and Gregor. The money was gratefully accepted and gladly given, but there was no special uprush of warm feeling. His family, you know, accepts his role as the new provider. And, you know, the mother and father don't have to work. The sister doesn't have to work. There's talk of sending her to the conservatory. So we could say that there's a routine that has been established that is now disrupted. And what do we find out? Well, the family members Will each of them change? They are going to enter the workplace in one way or another. So the father goes back to work and, uh, you know, becomes a porter, wears a uniform and, you know, carries out his duties. The mother takes in sewing projects so she can work at home. Uh, she also helps out with the cooking, and so does the sister, Greta. Greta is herself not only going to go out and get work, but is going to apply herself at night to courses so that she can better her position, right? And so you could say that they're all stepping up, and they're actually doing okay as a, a result. Uh, they're in somewhat reduced circumstances that are signified by reducing the number of the servants, um, you know, getting rid of the servant girl, bringing in the charwoman, taking in lodgers who they have to then attend to, who are kind of jerks. And we know that the lodgers take advantage of the fact that the Samsa family has never had lodgers before, right? So there's a lot of economic or social dimensions to this um, metamorphosis, this transformation that is taking place, which is estranging all of them from Gregor, uh, but in some ways bringing them closer together. And this is a good way to move into talking about the family dynamics. So if we're paying uh, attention to the reactions and relations between Greta, the mother and father, to Gregor, we could say that the one thing that's uniform about this is now that he's a monstrous vermin or bog or however we're going to translate it, they are all repulsed by him. So their relationship has changed. It's not merely changed economically. It has changed in terms of a visceral bodily reaction. They do think of him, at least up until the end, perhaps, as still being who he is and suffering. But over time, he becomes not just repulsive, but also a burden to them. They are trapped with Gregor in the flat. They know they can't actually leave. And Gregor thinks, 
they could easily put me into a box with holes and take me to another place. This doesn't occur to them because they are stuck in the situation. And Gregor himself can't suggest this to him. Um, towards the end, we find that there's an interesting discussion that takes place after uh, the lodgers see Gregor and there's kind of a, a crisis. And Greta is going to make the case that they cannot go on like this and that this thing is no longer the brother that they had thought he was. She says, we must try to get rid of it. It will be the death of both of you when one has to work as hard as we do. One can't stand this continual torment at home on top of it. And Greta's father says, you know, if he could understand us, then perhaps we might come to some sort of agreement. And Gregor's sister, Greta, says, he must go. You must try to get rid of the idea that this is Gregor. The fact we've believed it for so long is the root of all our trouble. But how can it be Gregor? If this were Gregor, he would have realized long ago human beings can't live with such a creature. And then he'd have gone away on his own accord. So as it is, we've got to stop treating this as if it is Gregor. There's a cut that's happening here. Is it complete... Uh, you know, after Gregor dies and they find the body, you know, it's not quite clear that they've managed to, you know, resolutely change their mind about this. But it is definitely a kind of alienation. And we can talk about the different roles that before that they have. Greta steps up and becomes this caretaker, bringing him things to eat, cleaning out his room. Uh, she also becomes as we find in, in the story, the expert. She appoints herself the expert on things Gregor related and has projects like we should uh, change the furniture, take it out, you know. Um, the mother is a more passive figure. She really maintains part of her relationship, her previous relationship with, with Gregor, being the loving mother who wants the best for her son. Actually, there's a very important turning point that we'll talk about where she brings something up sort of in Gregor's um, own favor and voice. You know, wouldn't he say X, Y, Z? And then we have the father and the relationship with his father is a more antagonistic one. The father is a provider for the family because he has to be, because Gregor has ceased to be a provider, but he's also the protector of the family. Protector against who? Against Gregor. We find that the aggression that takes place is always on the part of the father who in his own you know, defense sees Gregor as the threatening creature. So, you know, he's throwing apples at him and injures him in the process. He chases him with uh, a stick uh, into the, the room. You know, he says, ah, I, I knew he'd get out, that, that sort of thing. There's actually a reference to the giant foot of the father coming down and Gregor doesn't want to get squished by it. So th there's definite alienation or estrangement from his family members. We should talk about Gregor himself. What is he going through in this narrative. So he is alienated, not just from uh, his workplace, society, his own family, but also from himself. So there's this physical transformation. And, you know, the alienation is kind of signified by the fact that he's laying on his back and he can't get all these little tiny legs to do what he wants to do. He's in a foreign body so to speak, which eventually he gains, you know, control over, but it's, it's still not one that's great. So like, you know, he's trying to get himself back in the room. He finds backing up is kind of difficult. Whereas for a human being, that would be quite easy. So Gregor has changed himself. He also has changed his senses. We find that he has less and less of a sense of sight. There's this discussion about looking out the window. Eventually it just becomes a gray uh, undescript landscape. And his sense of taste is particularly important. He no longer likes, he's actually repulsed by, his favorite beverage, milk. 
and he eats rotten things instead as a you know kind of scavenger beetle would. He also changes in his desires and his activities. Now, not completely. He would like to go back to his former self and assume his former work and status and have everything go back to normal. But as time goes on, there's less and less of that. He still does like music. That's what draws him out of the room. But he loves crawling around on the walls and the ceiling all day long and hanging there. And this is a sign that he's, tr- he's turning into something different from himself, right? So that is going to be quite important. Uh, there's also a definite loss of communication. His voice at first in the very first part of the story is still human enough that they can kind of hear him, but then it quickly changes into something that definitely isn't human and definitely doesn't provide communication. He has no other way of communicating either. Uh, He attempts to like show that he's taking care not to repulse them with his body by having, you know, the, uh, the, draped over blanket on the sofa. But the problem with these sorts of things is these gestures can mean anything. And so he finds himself essentially unable to communicate with all of the people who he cares about. So, you know, he's cut off in that way as well. um, From himself too. his, uh, his, you know, concept or experience of self is uh, going to be changing as well in terms of his work. He's no longer a worker. He identified himself as that, as a dutiful son and brother. Um, That's no longer available to him. His time, time no longer matters as much. We notice at the very beginning, oh, I'm late, right? I'd better get myself going so I can catch the next train. That's not going to matter at all as he becomes more and more invalid, more and more confined. Projects. He had many projects before he finds himself estranged from those. They kind of no longer matter at this point because he can't accomplish them. And we find that he is aware of this change that is taking place, which takes place partly without him being aware. And then it's brought to his attention. I mentioned that his mother spurred him to this. So when they're talking about moving all the furniture out of the room, um, she says, doesn't it look as if, doesn't it look as if we're showing him by taking away his furniture, we've given up hope of his ever getting better and are just leaving him coldly to himself. I think it would be best to keep his room exactly as it has always been so that when he comes back to us, he will find everything unchanged and be all the more easily able to forget what has happened in between. And then we, we see this really important realization. On hearing these words from his mother, Gregor realized the lack of all direct human speech for the past two months. Direct human speech, people talking to him, must have confused his mind. Otherwise, he could not account for the fact that he'd quite earnestly looked forward to having his room emptied of furnishing. Did he really want his warm room so comfortably fitted with old family furniture to be turned into a naked den in which he would certainly be able to crawl unhampered in all directions, but at the price of shedding simultaneously all recollection of his human background? He had indeed been so near the brink of forgetfulness that only the voice of his mother, which he had not heard for so long, had drawn him back from it. He wants to remain human. He wants to remain his old self. And he was at risk of losing that because he had slowly become estranged from himself in this new body with its new desires and lack of older desires. He's become unanchored, so to speak. So uh, we can talk about all sorts of modes of, of estrangement or alienation here. And this you know, leads us to asking, is that part of the moral of this story? Is that what kind of story this is? What kind of story 
are we looking at? What is this story? Should we look at it as a kind of a weird tale? This is speculative fiction. What is it like to be uh, to go from being a commercial traveler to being a giant bug in your family apartment, right? Or is it a fable where maybe there isn't actually a point to the story, it's just supposed to entertain? Or is it a parable, a, a kind of metaphor in story form about what it is like to go from agency and you know being part of a society, a family as well, to being a burden or being nobody because of a change in your circumstance. And many people have theorized about this. There's all sorts of interpretations you can find out there. Um, so we're not going to stake out a position on that. But alienation certainly is central to the narrative of the story. And whatever meaning or importance we assign it, it's going to be central to that as well.